to external systems, like for instance, hydrogen niobium, we have metallic electrons, electron bath, they act like a bath, so they give rise to friction, but this is quantum friction. And so there's a very fascinating phenomenon that when you jack up that coupling with the external bath, that there is a regime, it's called a, it's also similar to the condo regime, but those are names, don't forget about it. So, so tunneling means that things go back and forth. Okay? But there is a regime where the coupling constant is large, then this particle just gets, gets trapped in one of the wells. It doesn't decay at all. It gets localized. It's due to what is called dynamic disorder. This is an example of dynamic disorder. This is a case of a static disorder where a similar phenomenon occurs. This problem is also related to measurement problem in quantum mechanics. So some people are interested in measurement that you, this is a, is a wave function collapse. You keep on making repeated measurements. This is called also quantum Zeno effect. So all these fascinating phenomena happen in our material system, even in a simple type binding model like the Anderson model. Okay. Then the other thing that we talked about is that, you see, transport is like, like diffusion. It's not ballistic transport. What is ballistic? Ballistic is simply means that uh, the position, if something moves with constant velocity, then uh, the, position, the, the distance traversed is the velocity times t, right? So the distance squared will be v squared t squared. So whenever distance scales like t, you call it ballistic motion. What happens if I have diffusive motion? The mean square distance goes like uh, the mean the mean square distance. Goes like, that goes like t. The root root mean square will go like square root t, and that's called diffusive motion. Okay. So uh, so if I have diffusion, I mean a simple way of saying this is that uh, diffusion coefficient. Okay, may not be a very simple way of saying this, but the diffusion coefficient, this is what is called a Kubo formula. Uh, that, you know, all these transport quantities like sigma, the, the conductivity, diffusion coefficient, it depends on, they depend on something like the integral of a correlation function, zero to infinity, a velocity correlation function. Have you seen correlation? I mean, I'm sure chemistry students said no, but physics students have seen correlation functions? Chemistry students have never seen correlation functions. We'll talk about it. Okay, anyway, so let me, let, let me just do a this. So I don't want to get into the Google formula. But the point is that uh, what I wanted to say is that you can easily see why mean square distance goes like, so another way of showing this. Brownian motion so the first equation that you can write down is x dot is equal to v it's just the definition of velocity rate of change of position is velocity v dot let us say it's a free particle there's no force but v dot is in fact there is a damping term. This is the Stokes <coughs> equation, right? Minus gamma b, right? But there's also a, a noise term. So this is noise. Now, if you go to high friction limit, high friction, <coughs> on this I'm willing to give another set of lectures if Sean invites me. On diffusion, Brownian motion, etc. The high friction means that you look at a regime in which gamma t is much larger than one. Than gamma. So you're looking at a time scale which is longer than gamma inverse. Then it is like the ball moving in the Stokes jar. You can ignore the time derivative of v, and so in this regime, 
V itself goes like 1 over gamma times f of t. And you plug it in here, and you get therefore x dot as 1 over gamma squared times f of t. So you integrate this equation, and you get x of t as 1 over gamma squared integral 0 to t f of t prime d t prime. And the quantity that you want to look at is x square of t. So x square of t, therefore, is, uh, what was, uh, sorry, this is gamma squared. So it's 1 over gamma squared in a double integral, 0 to t, 0 to t, dt prime, dt double prime, and this correlation function. So if, if you stick in a white noise, you'll find that x square of t is scaling like this t. One of the integrals you can do by, the, if it's a white noise, then it is a delta t minus t prime. You do one of the integrals, and the other integral will simply give you linear t prime. So that's diffusion. That's what Einstein did in 1905. So in the diffusive limit for Brownian motion, uh, mean squared x goes like t, and ballistic will be the case where x squared goes like t squared. So the trend, in some sense, transition from the metallic state to the insulated state is like a transition from the ballistic to the diffusive state. So now, where is diffusion coming in? Well, we already saw that in the Drude formula. That in the Drude formula, your Drude, Drude conductivity is actually this is more correctly is a is proportional to the density of states. So this is like density of states. <coughs> That is number of states per unit energy per unit volume, and uh, n times e squared tau over m, and tau is a scattering time, right? So it is through tau that the diffusion coefficient occurs. So there's a Kubo, another Kubo formula which I just simply write down. That sigma turns out to be e squared and you write a density of states, this is density of states, times the diffusion coefficient. This is a general Kubo formula, which I have not derived here. Just take it for granted. And, and so the, it's clear that d is related to tau. So what's the relation between d and tau? Just as I have this, if I work in the velocity space, it turns out that d is in fact, uh, is like, the Fermi velocity times tau. Remember, Dr. Parthamitra pointed out that the velocity that we are talking about characteristically is just a Fermi velocity. And uh, so what is tau? Tau itself is that, just go once, uh, think about Maxwellian kinetic theory, that tau is a mean free time between two collisions. So the mean free time between two collisions is the mean free path divided by the Fermi velocity. So this term, uh, so now I want it as, sorry, this is Vf, right. So Vf, yeah, so Vf, Proportional to tau, and tau is.
is the mean time between two collision events, right? So clearly tau is temperature dependent, right? Because if I increase temperature, then the electrons become more vigorous, right? They bump into each other, each other more often. So, so what will happen if the temperature increases? Tau would decrease, correct? Right? Tau would decrease. So uh, if tau decreases, then the resistivity resistivity rho is actually inversely proportional to the conductivity. So the resistivity is therefore proportional to 1 over tau. So if tau decreases, my resistivity increases, which is intuitively we all know that if my, if my temperature increases, then the resistivity increases, right? Okay. So this part is fully understood that rho of t, if you plot versus t, then resistivity increases and you have d rho dt, the slope of this is actually positive, right? It's like dy dx, the slope is positive. This is a diagram that you always draw because if you have a superconductor, then at some temperature, resistivity will drop down to zero here and you have zero loss transportation. But then uh, it was Mui who looked at various samples in two dimension, Dutch physicist, and he found out, and these are disordered systems, and he found out that at a particular, at some sufficiently low temperature, d rho d t resistance again starts increasing, but the d rho d t slope is actually negative. Okay? And this is due to localization transition. So this is, this phenomenon, so it's an experimentally observed phenomenon that he, he uh, that we found find out that the slope of the resistivity changes in sign. So that's Mui's work, and I have some data here.